Osaka had an interesting choice of words yesterday when talking about um, her future, her tennis match. Um, she she you know addressed the media. She started crying a little bit. She got very emotional, and she basically said that she doesn't know when she's gonna play again. She's not enjoying her tennis, and that she needs a break. And I think it's very evident that she does need a break. She needs to you know take a step back from tennis. And you know, analyze it from you know a couple a couple steps back and see if she really wants to continue to do this. Um, here are some of her quotes that she said yesterday at the end of her press conferences. She had answered some other questions before. This was at the end when she was addressing, uh, I believe, it was the Japanese media. So these are her quotes. Recently, when I win, I don't feel happy. I feel more like a relief. When I lose, I feel very sad, and I don't think that's normal. I'm kind of at this point where I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. And honestly, I don't know when I'm going to play my next match. And she said this very emotional, like from the heart. You could tell that she was, it was tough. It was tough for her to say. I think the 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 leader of the media like segment kind of wanted to like uh, cut her off. And I think she was, she thought she was helping her out. And she was like, okay, you know, we're done here. And she was like, no, let me finish. Osaka was like, no, nah, let me finish. Let me finish. And she finished and... You know, it just felt like she really wanted to address the media. Um, she must have a lot of pressure. She must feel like she's letting a lot of people down. But, you know, I think she does need to take a step back. Like, obviously, she's a great player. She's a young player. She's one of these next generation that's going to, you know, carry woman tennis into the future. And, you know, we're all excited to see her as tennis fans or just as sports fans or just as anyone that likes to see young talent coming um, and, you know, taking – the mantle or taking the reins from, from the older generation and just being great. We're all excited to see her succeed and be great. But, you know, I feel like for the most part, fans are pretty, you know, they'll turn on you quickly. And Osaka, she she was the reigning champion. She won the U.S. Open and it looked like the crowd was behind her. They, they were cheering for her. Obviously, everyone that was attending the U.S. Open, anyone that's following the U.S. Open knows about Osaka and the French Open and how she, you know, all, everything that happened in the French Open, why she missed Wimbledon. So everybody was, you know, like, I feel like everyone was trying to be supportive of her. And for the most part, they were. But as soon as, you know, Osaka um, started playing, uh, started losing her composure against uh, Leila Fernandez, then you can see the, the crowd turning on her. They even booed her a little bit. She was taking a little bit of time to get back to get back into ready position. And that just goes to show, like, you know, the crowd crowd will root you, you know, they'll stay with you, they'll ride with you when you're doing great. But, you know, they're quick to turn on you, too. Like like we saw yesterday, they were rooting for her. Um, then it would look like she might get upset, and they were rooting for the upset. And then as soon as Osaka started to show some signs of, you know, not really wanting to be there or maybe... Um, that the, it was too much for her and she started, you know, acting out, throwing her racket, you know, taking a little bit longer to get back into ready position. The crowd, the crowd turned on her and started booing her a little bit. It wasn't like anything crazy, but they did turn on her a little bit. And my point being that she should take a break because if she's not enjoying her tennis, I feel like it's never, she can't just play herself out of it. Like she can't just... Um, the only way she could do it is if she goes on a, on a, if she, if she were to play at her, her way out of it, she would have to go win like a tournament, something major that just uplifts you like to a different level. But the way she's feeling right now, I think that's, it's almost impossible to win a major, a grand, a uh, U.S. Open, French Open, anything like that. When you're, when you're not enjoying your tennis, the, the amount of pressure that she feels that she says that. When she wins, it's more of a relief. It's not even like enjoying herself. There's no way she could get to a final. And if she's not getting to a final, we're going to see more games like this, like where she loses her composure, where she's taking a little bit longer to get in, into ready position. And, you know, the crowd is going to turn on her. And then once the crowd turns on you, you're going to start enjoying tennis even less. And it's just going to be an endless, a endless loop. So... I think for the better of, of Naomi, I think it is better for her to take a break, to take a step back from bas- from tennis and just, you know, gather her thoughts and, and really just analyze if she wants to do this. Because she doesn't she doesn't have to play another tournament. Like, uh, she, she had this segment with uh, Nick Kyrgios and Billie Jean 
and it was pretty good. I didn't watch the whole thing, but basically one of the clips that I saw was, um, I believe it was Billie Jean told her that, you know, you don't have to play another game if you don't want to. And it's true. Like I said, she's young. She's 23. Uh, we obviously all thought she was going to be here playing, uh, entertaining us for the next 10 plus years. But if she doesn't, she made money already. She has a lot of endorsements. Um, if she If she does not find tennis enjoyable anymore if it's just a cause of her anxiety of her depression if this is the main thing if she doesn't want to be in the spotlight if she's someone that thrives or wants to you know pursue another profession where she's not in the spotlight where she's able to um retreat and you know walk the streets of of wherever she lives and, and not be recognized and you know all of those stuff that you know re us regular people regular joes get to enjoy if she wants something like that where she's you know i don't want to be a superstar i don't want to be a celebrity i, I just want to you know do something else and go ahead and pursue it um one of the things that <laughs> i could tie it to is kind of like rihanna we all know that she uh, we all met her with her music that's how she you know got big and that's how she made her her you know her first big break that's how she made her money and I think there was an interview that said, like, you know, music wasn't her passion. It wasn't, like, her um, her end-all, be-all. Like, she really enjoys the lingerie and the makeup and all that stuff. And we've seen that she used her platform and her success as a singer to really drive her, her you know, her Fenty brand and her makeup and all her lingerie and all that stuff. And now, me, I, I've been waiting for Rihanna to drop music for God knows how long. And it doesn't seem like she's really, you know, in the in the rush to drop music. And if she doesn't drop music ever, then it's pretty understandable. Like, she's made it. She doesn't have, she doesn't owe us anything. And if, I'm not, I'm not comparing the two things, but I could just say to Naomi, like, hey, you already, you already made some dough. You, you should be set. You have sponsors. Uh, you know, you already won some Grand Slams. If you're not enjoying tennis anymore, like, there's no reason to keep doing it. I'm sure she could use her capital, her her money that she's already made and just live a comfortable life and find something that really finds brings her joy instead of just, you know, going to tournaments with a lot of pressure, disappointing herself, disappointing others, having the crowd turn on her. It's just that's not that's not the best case scenario. And if she if she does take a step back and then she tries to pursue other venues and she doesn't enjoy them, then that might also reignite her passion for tennis like um i'm sure there's a lot of people that hate their job and then they go get another job and they hate the other job more and then they go back because they're like all right you know what i think i was just too close to this i didn't i didn't look at it from a distance or or it could even be like relationships you're with someone that you think is like you always think the grass is greener and you leave them and then you come back you get with somebody else or you don't even get anybody else and you're like damn i fucked i fucked that up i should have stayed with my like, I wasn't appreciating what I had right in front of me. So that could be the case, too. Naomi, uh, if she takes a long break, she might just have to take all of the rest of 2021 off and the tw rest of 2022 off and then see if 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 she feels that desire to come back. And, you know, I feel like she will. I feel like it's going to be a, a short break, maybe like a year long, and then she'll she'll get the itch. She'll get the itch to come back and... Um, and sh hopefully she'll be back because I, I do want to see continue to see her playing tennis. But I would not be surprised if that's it. If she does call it, if she, uh, you know, starts starts enjoying her free time, starts enjoying being away from the spotlight and just wants to continue to live a uh, life like that. So all I know is she definitely should take a break. She should not continue this um, the rest of the calendar year for tennis after the U.S. Open. She should definitely take a step back she she probably should have continued her break after the french open she missed wimbledon um there was a, there was an immense amount of pressure to play the olympics because it was in her native country and then once she came back for that it was like okay you're back like you gotta play the u.s open you're the reigning champion i think she should have just skipped everything and just you know gotten herself to the right place but hey you can't blame her for trying and we'll see where she where she ends up as far as Layla Fernandez who she played she's a lefty so she gives a soccer problem she she has a she has struggled playing against lefty players and it was just the, the second 18 year old that won yesterday uh Layla Fernandez she showed a lot of heart a lot of spirit 
Canadian tennis is on the rise. Shapovalov, FFA, Leila Fernandez. I think there's others. I just don't remember their names, but she played a great game. She showed a lot of composure. Um, she got broken in the second set, and Naomi was about to serve for the for the match, and Leila Fernandez broke her right back, forced a tie break, and she dominated that tie break, and she carried that momentum into the third set. Osaka lost her composure, and, and that was game. Leila Fernandez... Got the victory. She moves on to the fourth round of the U.S. Open. It was an exciting match. I watched it. It was great. So I wish Leila Fernandez the best of luck. I mean, it's not her. It's not, you know, she had Naomi Osaka, who's visibly rattled. But, you know, Leila Fernandez could only play whoever's in front of her. So shout out to her to take out the reigning champion, upset of the week. Shout out to Leila Fernandez. And for Naomi Osaka... I hope you take a break from tennis and you, you know, you figure out what you want to do um, because this, you know, this is a bad situation to be in, like I already explained, to continue to play and try to persevere. And obviously, if you're not enjoying your tennis, you're not going to have the best attitude. You're not going to have the best body language or, you know, um, reactions and the crowd is going to turn on you, which is going to make you enjoy tennis even more even less which is going to make you like you know just be more irritable be more upset and it's just a bad loop so it's it's best to just take take a step back and you know analyze what you want to do and i hope you know you get you figure out what you want to do if it's tennis hey great for us great for me who likes to talk about sports if it's not then you know good luck with all your ventures